Attention, attention, emergency alert. This is not a drill. The Milky Way is on fire. I repeat, the Milky Way is on fire. Evacuation protocols activated. All terrestrial life forms are to be moved to the Andromeda galaxy immediately. I repeat, wait, a fire in our home galaxy? It all comes down to the incredibly hot gas surrounding the Milky Way. This isn't just intensely hot, it's also existed for billions of years. But what's heating this gas and keeping it that way? The Milky Way holds far more gas than stars, and this gas is crucial for forming new stars. Over billions of years, this massive reservoir has allowed the galaxy to keep producing stars. But this gas is incredibly thin and spread out, which makes it next to impossible to observe it directly. For a long time, this made it difficult to figure out how much gas the Milky Way really contains. But in recent decades, researchers finally confirmed that the galaxy is indeed surrounded by an enormous sphere of hot gas. This gas cloud extends as far as 700,000 light years from the galaxy's center and reaches temperatures of several million degrees. At first, scientists thought the gas's insane temperature was due to the Milky Way's gravity. They believed that gravity caused the gas to swirl around, keeping it from falling inward and heating it up in the process. But then, recently, scientists have discovered something even more surprising a second layer of gas. And it's even hotter. How did we discover this gas with a temperature of around 18 million degrees Fahrenheit? Faint x-rays coming from all directions in the sky revealed the presence of this gas. The gas also showed up as it absorbed light from distant quasars, bright objects far outside of our galaxy. No wonder scientists began looking for the sources of heat that could explain this bizarre phenomenon. They soon found that the two types of gas, the X-ray emitting gas and the absorbing gas, came from different regions in the galaxy. The X-ray emitting gas is apparently produced by a puffed up region around the Milky Way's stellar disk. This region is a direct result of the galaxy's star formation, which is still going on. Massive stars in these regions eventually explode as supernovae, releasing huge amounts of energy. This energy heats the surrounding gas to extreme temperatures. The gas heated by supernovae becomes turbulent, moving around chaotically. Some of it escapes into the space around the galaxy, while some of it cools down and falls back toward the disk. This continuous cycle of heating, cooling, and movement keeps the hot gas layer visible in X-rays. The absorbing gas is enriched with elements like sulfur, magnesium, and neon. These elements are created inside massive stars through nuclear reactions and escape into space during supernovae explosions. Runaway stars that are flung out of the Milky Way's disk also contribute to this process. When they explode as supernovae, they create pockets of enriched gas above the galaxy's disk. The X-ray emitting gas forms a glowing layer around the Milky Way's disk. This layer never disappears due to the star formation and supernova activity happening in the galaxy. Together, these processes explain both the absorbing and emitting signals observed by astronomers. Star formation, supernova explosions, and gas movement all work together to shape the Milky Way. The hot gas not only helps regulate star formation, but also redistributes materials created inside stars and elements produced in stellar cores are spread throughout the galaxy by supernovae, becoming the building blocks for future generations of stars. The research team plans to keep observing the gas at other wavelengths of light. This might give us even more information about how the gas behaves and what it's made of. And once we understand the dynamics of this gas, we're likely to learn more about how galaxies like the Milky Way evolve over time. We need all the data we can collect after all. We don't even know the true shape of our galaxy yet. Recent discoveries have revealed that the Milky Way is not a flat disk as previously thought. No, it has a warped structure. And the craziest thing? Dark matter might be the cause of this deformation. The first confirmation that the Milky Way isn't a perfectly flat disk came from observations by the Gaia spacecraft. 
Gaia mapped the positions and movements of over a billion stars, and its observations showed that the Milky Way extends farther outward than initially believed. At its edges, the galactic disk was a wavy, warped structure with serious deformations along the outer edge. But what causes the warp? These deformations may result from ancient galactic collisions, like the Milky Way's collision with the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy around 6 billion years ago. However, a new study suggests another possibility. The warp might be caused by a tilted dark matter halo surrounding our galaxy. Dark matter halos are invisible, yet massive structures surrounding most galaxies, including the Milky Way. These halos contain most of a galaxy's mass and have a strong gravitational influence on the galaxy's structure. If a dark matter halo is tilted relative to a galaxy's plane, its gravitational effects could distort the galaxy over time. To figure out whether this theory is true, researchers used data from highly detailed computer simulations that modeled galactic evolution, seasoning the process with dark matter and interactions between matter and magnetic fields. The analysis revealed that the inner region of a dark matter halo can indeed tilt significantly with respect to a galaxy's plane. This tilt could result from galactic collisions or close encounters with other galaxies. Such crooked halos can stay this way for billions of years, which is long enough to warp the galactic disk. At the same time, this phenomenon isn't something unique. Astronomers have observed warped planes in other galaxies as well. In fact, nearly half of all spiral galaxies in the universe have warped disks. So, tilted dark matter halos and their gravitational effects might play a widespread role in shaping galaxies over time. While we're looking for answers, the Milky Way continues to shine brightly. But what kind of space electricity keeps its lights on? What fuels the process of star formation? After all, roughly one sun-sized star is born each year in the galaxy, and it needs a lot of fuel. Star formation requires hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe. But it would still have been depleted long ago, unless there were a replenishing source. The source might be fast-moving hydrogen clouds raining down into the galaxy's disk. The hydrogen fueling the Milky Way is ionized, making it challenging to detect. Unlike atomic hydrogen, which emits light, ionized hydrogen does not. Instead, it absorbs light, which means it can only be observed when it passes in front of a bright background source. Before, astronomers used quasars, extremely bright distant space objects, as backlighting to detect these gas clouds. Unfortunately, in this case, it was impossible to determine how far away the clouds were. They could have been located anywhere between the Milky Way and the quasars billions of light years away. To pinpoint the location of the gas clouds, astronomers turned to the cosmic origin spectrograph aboard the Hubble Space Telescope. They observed 27 stars located within 10,000 light years of the Milky Way's disk. They analyzed the star's light and found that about half of the stars were obscured by gas clouds. It means they were close enough to directly feed the Milky Way's disk. The researchers calculated that the gas clouds contained a total mass equivalent to a whopping 110 million suns. This vast reservoir of hydrogen offers more than enough fuel to sustain the Milky Way star formation. But where did those clouds come from? So far, it still remains a mystery. There are two main possibilities. The cloud might consist of hydrogen formed shortly after the Big Bang, primordial gas. These structures could have remained outside any galaxy for billions of years, only recently falling into the Milky Way's gravitational pull. Or, the clouds might be made of material ejected from the Milky Way itself. When stars explode as supernovae, they can blow gas outward. Over time, this material could cool and fall back toward the disk, forming the clouds. We'll be able to figure out the origin of the clouds only after studying their chemical makeup. Gas from exploding stars contain heavier elements, while primordial gas created after the Big Bang is composed almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. 
future ultraviolet telescopes could provide the detailed measurements needed to settle the question. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.